So here's a problem that asks us to verify whether or not a function has a zero on a given interval using the intermediate value theorem. Uh, I'm not going to go through the second part of this set of directions here. I'm just going to use the intermediate value theorem to verify the existence of a zero. So what the intermediate value theorem says is essentially this. If you have an interval from A up to B and at A the function value is say right here at F of A and at B the function value is maybe a little higher than that up here F of B. If you pick any Y value that's intermediate to F of A and F of B or any Y value in between F of A and F of B and it can be anywhere in between uh, pick any Y value in between how are you gonna get from here A comma F of A to here B comma F of B with a continuous graph without crossing this intermediate Y value at least once you can draw a line you can draw a wave, you can draw anything you want. As long as it's continuous, you have to cross this y value at least once. And that's going to occur at an x value that happens to be between a and b. So what we're asked to do here in number 46 is prove that this function has a zero on this interval. Now, we want to use the intermediate value theorem in order to do this. But before we can use the intermediate value theorem, we're going to have to say that our function is continuous. So f of x is continuous since why? Well, if you look at these pieces individually, e to the x is continuous everywhere, and x is continuous everywhere. And you have the, if you have the sum of two continuous functions, that's going to be continuous everywhere. So f of x is continuous since it's the sum of two other continuous functions. So we know our function's continuous. That's going to allow us to go ahead and use the intermediate value theorem. Now what I'm going to try to determine now is I'm going to try to determine at this x, what's my y value, and at this x, what's my y value. So if I figure out what f of negative 1 is, uh, that's going to require me to put negative 1 in place of my x's. And this is something that might be a little bit uncomfortable to think about without a calculator, but this is obviously just minus 1. This first piece is going to be more troublesome. Right now it's e to the negative first over 1. I'd rather look at that with a positive power, so I'm going to kick that thing with the negative power, that base e, across the fraction bar into the denominator, change the sign on its exponent. Now if you remember anything about the base e, it's probably that e itself is about 2.7. So this fraction right here is 1 over 2.7. That would be somewhere in between 1 half and 1 third. And we're taking a number in between 1 half and 1 third and we're subtracting 1 from it. What you should hopefully recognize about that is it's definitely going to be less than 0. Now if you figure out what f of 0 is, a little bit easier to do this, a lot easier to do this. Put 0 in place of the x's. Something to the 0 power is going to give you an answer of 1. Add 0 to it and obviously you're staying at 1. And this answer is obviously positive. Graphically, what does this mean? Well, graphically what this tells us is at the x value of negative 1 on the graph of f we're gonna have a negative y value, a negative function value. So our graph has to get from this point over here, negative 1, comma, whatever the numerical value of this is, it's, it's negative based on the arguments we made a minute ago, up to 0, comma 1. We said initially that this graph is continuous. How do you get from this point in the plane to this point in the plane with a continuous function without crossing the y value of 0 at least once in between. Uh, the answer to that is that you can't. So what we've said here, what all this work implies, is that by the intermediate value theorem, f of x has to equal 0 at least once in between the two x's we've been using, in between negative 1 and 0. So we've just proved that a function has a 0 on an interval using the intermediate value theorem.